Hello, it's me. I'm Nafid. In this video, I'll talk about Centron on-prem and uh, I will introduce you to that Centron on-prem. Now, what is the difference between Centron on-prem or premises and the cloud base? You will see in this uh, output, you will find that there are few differences and also many similarities. Uh, example of this one, in the center on-prem, we don't support, for example, uh, uh, branch or SD1 solution. In uh, cloud, we have unlimited scalability here. If you deploy 11 node uh, cluster, you will have 40K, up to 40K devices. But a lot of differences, uh, similarities in between these two circles. Now, when to use center on-prem and when to use the cloud base. Mainly speaking, center on-prem normally for those clients who don't want to be the data to be in the cloud. So mainly speaking, of course, if you're looking for scalability, definitely is the cloud. If you're looking for peace of mind, definitely is the cloud. If you are talking about managed service provider, it is the cloud base, um, central base on the cloud. Is D1, for example, um, also the cloud. Now they have recently updated center on-prem. So it used to be one node, three node. So we call this one cluster deployment. So one, three, no, uh, five, and seven. Uh, up to seven node, 25K devices. What I mean by this, 25,000 devices that between switches, uh, controllers, and um, access points. Now they recently added 11 node deployment. Uh, that is in version 2.58. Um, and we can scale up to 40K uh, devices. Again, if you compare this one to Central in the cloud, definitely the cloud will be the winner in terms of scalability. If you would like to compare the three main uh, operating um, management systems, if you like, or softwares that are offered by Aruba, you will find we have here um, Airwave, we have Central on-premises, and we have Central in the cloud. Now, in a way, Central on-premises, to be quite honest, is kind of a um, upgrade in a sense uh, from Airwave. So it's Airwave, probably if you think about Airwave 8 now, 8.x, we talk about central on-prem equal or equivalent to Airwave 10. And um, central on-prem is installed on bare metal. So you download the software, there's installation procedures that you need to follow. Now, um, Airwave can be deployed as either uh, hardware, which is a platform uh, that is based on uh, DL360-380 servers, um, or you can download this one as a virtual machine. Um, Center on the cloud, you can clearly see the differences between these three different platforms. Um, one of the other thing is if you decided to de deploy Center on-prem on a server that was not initially an airwave, you will have what's called TPM security or certificate issue, uh, trusted platform module uh, certificate that will not be trusted on central on-prem that is not deployed on the standard or the certified, if you like, Airwave server hardware. Um, there will be also, I'll show you uh, that uh, I'm going to show you some details on that when we get to uh, look in, into central on-premises. Now, other things also within that um, comparison, Airwave, uh, Center on-prem, uh, Center on the cloud, what, is, uh, what are the features supported and what are the features not supported. Now, uh, I would like to show you the how to onboard devices. And uh, we will look in, into the access points later on. Uh, we will look also at the um, switches. Uh, onboarding devices, we have um, multiple options. You can either download um, comma separated value for the HPE, i.e. devices, and or you have third party comma separated value. If you have small number of devices being deployed, then you might want to go to serial number, MAC address and part number. Or you can do the device discovery. Now that's an example of adding a device in this case. We add a device with this serial number, with this MAC address, and that is a switch actually, with that part number. And part number simply is, what is the device? What is the specifications of the device? 
Part number is to indicate specific model of a device. Let us say eight port switch. So that will be say JL. 258A in this example, and then you might have hundreds of those. Um, uh, if you have different size switch or different model, then or different uh, type of the switch, you will fi find it um, will find a different part number. An example of a switch that is managed by central on premises here, and uh, we will talk about these later. Show our river central account um, command. You can see that we have entered this IP address of central on premises. Uh, connected, yes, managed, and that's the time and the date. Success, and there are no issues. Now, if you look into the access point, that's an instant access point interface or virtual controller interface. Um, it's worth you know, looking into the, the fact that when you add central on premises into that access point as one of the methods, another method is option 43, option 60 in the DHCP, you will notice that you will go to a system and you go to um, Airwave, actually. So literally, um, under the admin, uh, they go to Airwave. It is Airwave. And you download, install it. Uh, it is Airwave based on Linux, Ubuntu, Linux, uh, I think version 18, LTS. So that's Airwave. That's the IP address of the central on-premises. Um, then the shared secret and then whatever shared secret. You will have provided uh, central on premises with these details as well. Now, uh, once you do this, the access point will be managed by uh, Aruba Central. You can see that. Um, again, some details like uh, country code, name of the virtual controller, and so on and so forth. And we will move on later on to look into the switch and access point. That's an example of looking to center on premises. This is the FQDN. Of course, this has to be reachable by uh, and has to be registered in the um, DNS. Now, uh, I'm not talking about the installation of center on prem as such, but um, if you have, because this is um, installed on a server that is uh, not TPM, i.e., not signed, uh, not certified by Aruba CA. Now, what happens really in this case, uh, you will get an error message because this is um, self-signed certificate. If you click on this, you will find that the certificate is not secure. And um, they will, uh, if you look into here, you will find the common name CP. This is something I gave it to you um, as a name, COP training. And this is the domain name. And you'll notice the issued by and issued to. So it is a self-signed certificate. Notice that de these are default values. It says airway. Now our client or our machine doesn't trust this. What we can optionally do, of course, that will have implication on the communication between the central premises um, and the switches. Now um, you go advanced, you accept this one and you'll get uh, probably uh, another SSO, which is the again um, because of certificate. Now you log in. Once you log in, um, so we're going to log in. Again, the certificate. Uh, again, just please notice the different uh, common names here. And that will take us to center on premises. The fact this is not trusted by the machine, you get these errors on the browser. This by itself will not really affect your access, but you get these uh, you know, certificate issues every time. Now, as far as the local machine is concerned, again, in terms of being able to access this one, the functionality, that's not a problem. Now, this is an example of I tried to upgrade but failed. Uh, probably we will look at that, but the latest version now that can take uh, up to 11 nodes, 2.58. We will look at that um, later on in, in a few days. Um, so that will take us to central on-premises main page. Now, what we can do, uh, we can go to organization here, 
and one of the things that you can do is for that error to fix it and uh, go certificate now remember this is central on-prem it is its own self sign certificate so it's kind of it is a CA that we don't trust so if you click on this certificate you can download the certificate um, if you would like so root certificate here and if we go to that certificate and try to open it it's a PIM format PIM um, and we're gonna just have a look that is the certificate here right yeah that root CA that root CA um, that root CA is not trusted by the local machine what we can do to trust that if you would like we can bring it and install it in the root certificate of the actual local machine so if I go MMC and uh, we add uh, the uh, root certificate into this so we're going to go uh, file um, add and remove snap in and we're going to just uh, this is just to take us to the root certificate uh, of the user machine uh, user account and then we add another one for the computer account and this is the local one and the only purpose for this is now is to add certificate um, we go here we go trusted root and we go certificate now what we need is to add it so what we uh, what we can do all tasks and we're going to import that we know it was uh, downloaded into the download folder and I can go to download folder now and uh, probably modified um, server so certificate this one uh, it's, it's a root certificate but we need to change it because that is uh, .pem and so we're going to show all um, file types that's the one and we're going to just add it to the trusted root of the uh, local user so we're gonna say yes okay and then we're gonna add the same uh, into the local computer here uh, we're gonna do the same we'll task import and we're gonna go next we'll do the same search for all and then that's a PIM format certificate PIM file I'm gonna just add that one accept it now what happened actually in this case we have enabled the, uh, the machine um, so we're trusting this CA so most likely we need to log out and just re restart the browser that will uh, then allow us to connect to that certificate without any problem so I'm going to close the browser and then reopen it again once I've done this, notice certificate has been accepted and looks like connection is secure. There's no issue and certificate is valid now, even though it is the same, nothing has changed. But now because we trust the CA that has signed this, which is uh, sent to on-prem and that certificate has been trusted, we can log in now, admin at COP and then Now supply wrong password. No complaints from the certificate. Um, no certificate issue basically in this case. It will show you this message message of course, non TPM self signed certificate. And we already done the, these steps, no problem whatsoever. No. Um, now this is uh, it's kind of uh, older interface if you compare it to um, to Central in the Cloud. This is slightly older interface. Um, we can see the account here, user settings. You can see this is the idle time out. You can change it. You can navigate through a bunch of things. If you go to system management, you're going to see that the this is um, you know CPU utilization, memory, and so on. You'll see the data, like about the performance of your central on-premises. This is something you can't see in, in the central and the cloud. You can't see the actual cloud, central cloud or cloud-based central uh, performance. Uh, 
disks and uh, and so on. Um, version, you can see the version. This is where you can read try to upgrade to 2.585. You see um, if you have any network settings, if you need to add or change, uh, you do it from here. External services, connection to an outside world, backup and restore, you can do it from here. You can do um, multiple different things. Now, this is a one node uh, cluster and uh, that has been installed as a bare metal. I'll show you the server that we have installed it on. And this server basically is HPE ML350, uh, not exactly the same specs they the asked for, but that uh, will do the job. Uh, we log in. Uh, And it is literally Linux based server, uh, which is um, Ubuntu Linux. And here we can open, can clearly see the HTML5, which is the management interface. Now you can log in here, but the login, the username would be COP admin. Now this is a little bit tricky. It's easier to bring up a command line or. Um, so we can, we need to be able to verify that we can Bing it first. Bing COP training, obviously, dot class dot lab. We should be able to Bing it. And that's a response, which is the 101 um, IP address of the cluster. We can always SSH admin or COP admin indeed. Um, at 10.254.1.101 and we're going to say yes and the password we're going to provide our password now that's a command line you're going to agree and there we go here you can do maintenance stuff and probably will come back in a different video on this about this one about the installation and so on and so forth but that's a very quick introduction to you about the center on premises um, based on the data center that you have and this is uh, not ESXi, it is a bare metal server. So it is an operating system by itself, but it's based on Linux, uh, Ubuntu Linux actually. And uh, you don't have to be involved in Ubuntu Linux. Of course, if you contact TAC, they will have access to that Ubuntu Linux and they will be able to perform certain tasks.